Numbers 22 Then the sons of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond the Jordan opposite Jericho. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. So Moses was in great fear because of the people, for they were numerous, and Moab was in dread of the sons of Israel. Then Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this assembly will lick up all that is around us, as the ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of Moab at that time. So he sent messengers to Balaam the son of Beor at Pethor, which is near the river, in the land of the sons of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, a people came out of Egypt. Behold, they cover the surface of the land, and they are settled opposite me. So now, please come, curse this people for me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I may be able to strike them down and drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian went away with the fees for divination in their hand. And they came to Balaam and spoke Balak's words to him. And he said to them, Spend the night here, and I will bring word back to you as Yahweh may speak to me. And the leaders of Moab stayed with Balaam. Then God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent word to me. Behold, there is a people who came out of Egypt, and they cover the surface of the land. Now come, curse them for me. Perhaps I may be able to fight against them and drive them out. And God said to Balaam, Do not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam arose in the morning and said to Balak's leaders, Go back to your land, for Yahweh has refused to allow me to go with you. And the leaders of Moab arose and came to Balak and said, Balaam refused to go with us. Then Balak again sent leaders, more numerous and more honorable than the former. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak the son of Zippor, Let nothing, I beg you, withhold you from coming to me. For I will indeed honor you richly, and I will do whatever you say to me. Please come then, curse this people for me. And Balaam replied to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not do anything, either small or great, to trespass the command of Yahweh my God. So now, please, you also stay here tonight, and I will know what else Yahweh will speak to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise up and go with them, but only the word which I speak to you shall you do. So Balaam arose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the leaders of Moab. But God was angry because he was going. So the angel of Yahweh took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Now he was riding on his donkey, and his two young men were with him. Then the donkey saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned off from the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn it back into the way. Then the angel of Yahweh stood in a narrow path of the vineyards, with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And the donkey saw the angel of Yahweh, and it pressed itself to the wall, and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck it again. And the angel of Yahweh passed on ahead and stood in a narrow place, where there was no way to turn to the right hand or the left. Then the donkey saw the angel of Yahweh and lay down under Balaam, So Balaam was angry and struck the donkey with his stick. And Yahweh opened the mouth of the donkey, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Then Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a mockery of me. If there had been a sword in my hand, I would have killed you by now. And the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life to this day? Have I ever been accustomed to do so to you? And he said, No. Then Yahweh opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of Yahweh standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head down and prostrated himself to the ground. And the angel of Yahweh said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out as an adversary because your way was contrary to me. And the donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If it had not turned aside for me, I would surely have killed you just now, and let it live. And Balaam said to the angel of Yahweh, I have sinned. 
for I did not know that you were standing in the way against me. So now, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. But the angel of Yahweh said to Balaam, Go with the men, but you shall speak only the word which I tell you. So Balaam went along with the leaders of Balak. Then Balak heard that Balaam was coming and went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which is on the Arnon border, at the end of the border. So Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come now to you. Am I able to speak anything at all? The word that God puts in my mouth, that I shall speak. And Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath Huzoth. And Balak sacrificed oxen and sheep, and sent some to Balaam and the leaders who were with him. Then it happened in the morning that Balak took Balaam and brought him up to the high places of Baal, and he saw from there the end of the camp of the people. Psalm 62 For the choir director, according to Jeduthun, a psalm of David. Surely my soul waits in silence for God. From him is my salvation. Surely he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail a man, that you may murder him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a fence thrust down? Surely they have counseled to thrust him down from his high position. They find pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. Selah. Surely wait in silence for God, O my soul, for my hope is from him. Surely he is my rock and my salvation. My stronghold I shall not be shaken. On God my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are merely vanity and men of rank are a lie. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath of vanity. Do not trust in oppression and do not put vain hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that strength belongs to God, and that to you, O Lord, belongs loving kindness, for you repay a man according to his work. Psalm 63, a psalm of David, when he was in the wilderness of Judah. O God, you are my God, I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you, in a dry and weary land without water. Thus I have beheld you in the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips will laud you. Thus I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with fatness and richness, and my mouth offers praises with lips of joyful songs. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, your right hand upholds me. But those who seek my life to destroy it will go into the depths of the earth. They will be delivered over to the power of the sword. They will be a portion for foxes. But the king will be glad in God. Everyone who swears by him will boast. For the mouths of those who speak lies will be closed. Isaiah 11 Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of Yahweh will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahweh. And he will delight in the fear of Yahweh, and he will not judge by what his eyes see, nor render a decision by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he will judge the poor, and decide with uprightness for the afflicted of the earth. And he will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he will put the wicked to death. Also righteousness will be the belt about his loins, and faithfulness the belt about his waist. And the wolf will dwell with the lamb, and the leopard will lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a young boy will lead them. Also the cow and the bear will graze, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox, and the nursing baby will play by the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child will put his hand on the viper's den. They will do no evil, nor act corruptly in all my holy mountain. 
For the earth will be full of the knowledge of Yahweh, as the waters cover the sea. Then it will be in that day that the nations will seek the root of Jesse, who will stand as a standard for the peoples, and his resting place will be glorious. Then it will be in that day that the Lord will again acquire the second time with his hand the remnant of his people who will remain, from Assyria, Egypt, Pathros, Ethiopia, Elam, Shinar, Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. And he will lift up a standard for the nations, and assemble the banished ones of Israel, and will gather the scattered of Judah from the four corners of the earth. Then the jealousy of Ephraim will depart, and those who assail Judah will be cut off. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah, and Judah will not assail Ephraim. And they will swoop down on the slopes of the Philistines on the west. Together they will plunder the sons of the east. They will stretch out their hands over Edom and Moab, and the sons of Ammon will obey them. And Yahweh will devote to destruction the tongue of the sea of Egypt, and he will wave his hand over the river with his scorching wind, and he will strike it into seven streams and make men walk over dry shod. And there will be a highway from Assyria, for the remnant of his people who will remain, just as there was for Israel in the day that they came up out of the land of Egypt. Isaiah 12 Then you will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Yahweh. For although you are angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not dread. For Yah, Yahweh himself, is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Therefore you will joyously draw water from the springs of salvation. And in that day you will say, Give thanks to Yahweh, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Make them remember that his name is exalted. Praise Yahweh in song, for he has done majestic things. Let this be known throughout the earth. Cry aloud and shout for joy, O inhabitant of Zion. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. James 5 Come now, you rich, cry, howling over your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted, and your garments have become moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have rusted, and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. You have stored up such treasure in the last days. Behold, the pay of the laborers who mowed your fields, that which has been withheld by you, cries out against you, and the outcries of those who did the harvesting have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived luxuriously on the earth and lived in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous man. He does not resist you. Therefore be patient, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. Behold, the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the soil, being patient about it, until it receives the early and late rains. You too be patient. Strengthen your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not groan, brothers, against one another, so that you yourselves may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing right at the door. As an example, brothers, of suffering and patience, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we count those blessed who persevere. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and have seen the outcome of the Lord's dealings, that the Lord is full of compassion and is merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, or with any other oath. Let your yes be yes, and your no, no, so that you may not fall under judgment. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they will be forgiven him. Therefore, confess your sins to one another, and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. My brothers, if any one among you strays from the truth, and one turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his ways will save his soul from death 
and will cover a multitude of sins.